criticism. Did, I mean, did she show that Edward Snowden video that he put up on Twitter that shows oh, them maybe. drone bombing those kids? Um, right. th this this idea that like it is your patriotic duty to have this particular feeling about another country, no matter what the other country is. I don't care what country it is. Um, so that that goes too far on that side of it. And I think they're kind of react. It's kind of what you're saying. Yep. You yeah, know, it's your duty. It's just like for Biden or whoever you like, you're supposed to cover up for them. Because but the whole thing yeah. is like they're always saying they're only targeting Hamas and everybody else is a casualty. Well, if those guys are just unarmed civilians and they're walking alone, that's what they appear to be. Dresden. And you just blast them from the sky with robots. They're reacting to that. I do think, um, so I, I do so think that I, there is something patriotic about supporting our allies because we form alliances because it's in our national interest to form alliances. This is the tragedy of war. Yeah, this is insane. And no one knows what to think now, because if you can't talk about that, if you can't say that's real, then you're saying that genocide is okay as long as we're... What's going on, everybody? I have a bunch of stories to talk about today, not just one, so I hope you stay tuned. The first one is Joe Rogan calls what's going on in Gaza a genocide and compares it to the Holocaust. So you know that that's going to be very controversial. We're going to play the clips review it, talk about it, and mention how Joe Rogan, although of course he has the First Amendment to say that, it's actually one of the anti-Semitism hate speech rules that's being passed through legislation that says that you can't phrase it how he phrased it. We're going to talk about that too, because just like I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks now, today the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, has declared an executive order for anti-Semitism, and you guessed it, it includes the exact definition of hate speech phrases I've been talking about. It's happening almost every week or every month now from different Republicans and sometimes Democrats. Really got to talk about that. Second thing I want to talk about is Marsha Blackburn, a Republican senator, has said that TikTok is helping to recruit with cartels. We're going to look at what she's saying there and also reflect on how Marsha Blackburn and Ted Cruz tried to discriminate against unvaccinated people and give special privileges to the vaccinated, yet no Republican media seems to ever want to question them, including Turning Point USA, which gave a stage to elevate Ted Cruz and show everybody how awesome and conservative he is. And I haven't heard one single journalistic question asked on Big Con about why Marsha Blackburn and Ted Cruz tried to discriminate against the unvaccinated. It's extremely important. It's being swept under the rug. Then we're going to re uh, watch this old clip of Matt Walsh. It's not that old, but I found it interesting and very relevant to the conversation. He mentions in some sort of talk with Jeremy Boring and Ben Shapiro that in order to be loyal to America, you don't necessarily have to be loyal to a foreign country, in which you guessed it, of course, they completely disagreed with him. That clip is very, very interesting. Then I want to talk about two other things real quick. RFK Jr. picked a vice president that allegedly has donated a lot of money to Gascon, the far left prosecutor that is helping to ruin Los Angeles in the view of many. Then I want to review two crazy new rules and uh, weird ways of stopping theft that is happening in Canada and the United States. They're not blaming the thief. They're blaming the car manufacturer. And in some cases, they're telling you to just leave your fob near your door to make it easier for thieves. You heard that right. Lots of stories. It's going to take me a while. I hope you stay tuned. I hope you're here. Give me a thumbs up in the chat if the audio sounds good and the Dream Rare podcast starts now. It's the Dream Rare Podcast, welcome to the show The way to get the news at the desk or on the road Let's go, God is great and success in our control The world is crazy but we get better from obstacles, yeah What's going on everybody? Someone asked in the chat, I'm not going to read it till the end Because I really have to focus, I got a lot of clips to play Thank you guys uh, The Francis Scott Bridge Collapse I will say this before I start Because you asked if I have an opinion on it Personally, I want to wait for more information, and I think everybody jumped to their bias. If you think DEI is ruining the country, you say, oh, it's probably a DEI hire. Me, I personally thought that possibly it could be retaliation for the multi-front war America is helping fund. We're funding Ukraine and Israel, and I know that Russia had a terror attack, so I'm not saying it's related, but I'm going to wait for more information. My like gut tells me that it, it's retaliation for the stuff that America has been doing. I hope it's not obviously, and I hope it was just a mistake. Either way, it's not good, but I don't, you know, I'm not going to speculate because everyone's going to call me a conspiracy theorist because I'm not going to say I'm hundred percent sure, but I, I have a lot of theories. Let's just wait to see how the information plays out. So let me show you this real quick before I play the clips of Joe Rogan calling what's going on in Gaza genocide, which is interesting because Joe Rogan's one of the biggest figures in the country. But he broke when, and I know he's not going to get like arrested or anything, but there's anti-Semitism speech laws. I know people are probably tired of hearing about them, 
But just today, I want to show you, Governor Abbott has passed it through executive order. I want to read what he wrote and then tell you what it really means. Governor Abbott tweeted this. He said, anti-Semitism will not be tolerated in Texas. Today, I have issued an executive order to fight the increase in acts of anti-Semitism at Texas colleges and university. Texas stands with our Jewish students. We will ensure our college campuses are safe spaces for the Jewish community. And then he said that, uh, okay, I don't think I have it. <sighs> Sorry about that. I kind of cut it off because I zoomed in, but somewhere in the uh, retweet of what he was tweeting out, he said that he is asking schools to review their free speech policies to start cracking down on rhetoric. So I just want you guys to see a few words there. He said safe spaces. I've I called this out since 2019. I hate being right, but I actually love it. It's always been a facade. This, oh, we, we safe spaces, it's liberals doing the safe spaces on college campus. Yes, it absolutely is. Liberals on college campuses are insane. I'm not justifying what they're doing. They do want safe spaces. They're hypocrites. They have double standards. But so, so do Republicans. They're more controlled opposition than people even realize, where now they're passing executive orders to say, review free speech policies, crack down on rhetoric, which is words, to create a safe space for this group. And, and some people will say, no, not only you don't understand, it's just river to the sea chants that they're trying to shut down because those are genocidal chants. That's what you say. That's the lie. That's the strong man. That's the made up argument to justify the crackdown on the First Amendment. That's not what the laws say. Of course, I already know. I knew before I looked, but of course, I checked to make sure I was accurate. The anti-Semitism speech rules that he's asking schools to crack down on are not just that chant. They're not violence. Violence is already illegal. It's not a protest once it gets to that point. It's the 11 or 10 or 12 phrases that they consider hate speech, including Jews killed Jesus. You can't talk about banking and media statistics. You can't criticize Israel more than another democratic nation. What Joe Rogan says in this clip would be considered anti-Semitism because he compared what Israel's doing to World War II, which is one of the speech laws. They say you can't compare contemporary Israel policy to anything that Nazis did. Like that's one of the hate speech rules. Go read them. They're on the State Department website. Every governor and every Republican that passes these anti-Semitism rules, they're passing those speech laws that I'm telling you. So as I'm talking about it all week, what do you know? The governor of Texas just so happens to pass it through law today, even though it's already passed through law, but he's pushing it even harder through executive order to strong arm schools to create safe spaces. The word that Republicans made fun of liberals for five years. Oh, you just want a safe space. You just want a safe space. He literally wrote it in his tweet that he wants a safe space in order to crack down on rhetoric and speech. Without further ado, Here's Joe Rogan's perspective, and he's one of the biggest commentators in the world, where he says that he thinks what's going on is a genocide, which is, you know, being how big and influential he is, it's going to cause a lot of controversy. Of course, probably most people will enjoy that he said that. Many will not like it, including most media organizations. I'm sure the Joe Rogan smear pieces are just flowing through the mainstream press. Hey, I want to know what, we sh what she was fired for. Because was it criticism of Israel? Was it, I mean, did she show that Edward Snowden video that he put up on Twitter that shows them oh, maybe. drone bombing those kids that are, those men, I should say, unarmed people that were walking towards the rubble that yeah. clearly weren't causing yeah. any danger to anybody? Yeah, right. Between clips, I'm going to play another one. I just want to remind people, any Republican or any person that is pro-Zionist that says, no, the speech laws just say that you can't say river to the sea or you can't make calls for this and that. They're wrong. They're lying. You're not allowed. And they say, oh, you can criticize Israel or disagree with certain parts. No, you can't. I've read the hate speech rules. Trump passed it through executive order and strong arm schools. DeSantis passed it through a bill. Uh, now Governor Abbott's pushing it through executive order. They are trying to go after any teacher. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of terrible teachers. I don't even like universities anymore, but I'm just saying it's like they can teach all the kids the liberal stuff. It's no problem. But as soon as they cross that threshold, it's time to pull the money and the funding and go after them. You're you're not allowed to do that. Like you got to read these hate speech rules and that's what's being passed into law. So now Governor Abbott, like a fascist or a communist, is going to go after schools not to stop their communism and not to stop their socialism and not to stop their crazy you know, gender bending things that they're doing that, of course, Republicans don't care about that because they're controlled opposition. They do, but they can't do anything. They're going after their criticism of a foreign country and any sort of rhetoric that goes against the rules. Let's play the last few clips. 
you know, it's your duty. It's just like for Biden or whoever you like, you're supposed to cover up for them. Because but the whole thing is yeah. like they're always saying they're only targeting Hamas and everybody else is a casualty. Well, if those guys are just unarmed civilians and they're walking alone, that's what they appear to be. Dresden. And you just blast them from the sky with robots. I'm going to keep playing. There's a few other clips. This is the tragedy of war. Yeah, this is insane. And no one knows what to think now, because if you can't talk about that, if you can't say that's real, then you're saying that genocide is OK as long as we're doing it. And that is what we're saying. And if you're saying that from a perspective of someone who literally went through the Holocaust or you're. I mean, to be honest, Joe has balls of steel for doing this because he's he's literally calling it a genocide. And here you'll see him compare what they're doing similar to the Holocaust, which is going to like freak out journalists and. They're probably going to harass Joe Rogan for like the, the next five years because he said this. So let's see. Your tribe went through the fucking Holocaust and now you're willing to do it. I hope the irony is not lost on you. It, it, it's so nuts. It's so hard to imagine that someone where a, cu a culture like a country was like officially founded in what? 47, 48, 48. OK, officially found. Right, I'm going to play the last clip real quick. I have to chop it into short clips or I'll say like copyright strike my page. So that's so recent <laughs> and, you, and you guys are willing to do what was done to you that led you to believe that you needed to start your own country. You're yeah. willing to do that at least on a small scale in Gaza. Like there's nothing left. If you see the videos, let's see, let's see some recent footage of. Gaza. So the reason for playing that clip is a few reasons. First of all, it's newsworthy. One of the biggest podcasts in the world just said, just compared what's going on in Gaza to the Holocaust and said, how, how could they do that given their recent history? Which like, you know, that's going to really bother a lot of people. Like a, a lot of people don't want to hear that. And a lot of people don't want to hear it to the extent that they've lobbied Republicans and Democrats and convinced them to pass anti-Semitism hate speech laws that make that word hate speech like that, you know, to even like you, you're allowed to compare anything to Nazis, but what Israel's doing according to these rules. Like they're not rules where it says you can't do that. Like there's no rules for Italians or Christians or Catholics. It, it's just for one race, one religion, and one country. And one of the phrases makes a biblical interpretation borderline hate speech or does make a hate speech. So they've somehow lobbied Christian and Catholic uh, Republicans to pass laws against their own religion. It's, it's wild. Uh, so not only is that controversial, what he said, not only is it newsworthy, but it also breaks one of the anti-Semitism, anti-First Amendment speech rules that Governor Abbott just passed through for in a Texas executive order. And what's interesting is Joe Rogan lives in Texas. They're not going to come to his house like England, but I bet if, you know, at a certain point in America, if we lose our values, it's going to be like England or it's going to be like Europe or Canada, where literally the police show up at your house and they're like, did you tweet? A word that we didn't like did you tweet criticism of muslims did you tweet criticism of that did you tweet criticism of like gay people you know america it's not close to that but it's it's creeping closer so once you set the foundation of these rules and these laws you never know so i wanted to play it for a few reasons just the i would say I wouldn't call it a coincidence because it's not, but the fact that the governor, and I got a lot of clips to play, so I'm going to rush through this. The fact that the governor, I'll, I'll just show you guys again. The governor of Texas today passed in an anti-Semitism executive order to create safe spaces, safe spaces to push schools to crack down on rhetoric. Not their, And every Republican that doesn't want you to know about this, they all lie about it. They all say, no, no, it's just the river to the sea chant. Lie. Oh, no, it's just this. Lie. It's just that. Lie. And then you ask them, like you ask Jeremy Boring in a space or something, and you're like, so would you support anti-free speech laws? And he's like, never. Well, it's happening every day now. Noam did it a couple weeks ago. He, it's been happening for three years, slowly and then quickly. And you say you're against it, but then when it happens, you cover it up, lie about it, say that it's not happening, and then straw man an argument to be like, do you want Hamas to do this on college campuses? No. Do I want liberals to do this? No, but that's not what the law says. So I just find it fascinating that Joe Rogan broke one of the laws while the law is being passed. And, you know, that is for schools and it is an infringement on the First Amendment. So I don't even know how they're going to use it. It seems like right now the government, Trump, DeSantis, all of these Republicans and some Democrats, it seems like they're using it by pushing it into law as much as they can and just strong arming their government power and resources and financing and funding 
to, to manipulate things that they can control easier, like schools to, to weed that stuff out so they can get back to just trying to transgender your kids as opposed to talking about foreign policy. So, you know, I don't really have a huge stance on what Joe Rogan said. I think he has the First Amendment right to say that, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a cosign, but I, I think everybody's starting to realize that something's a little odd. Like in America, you could say whatever you want about America. You can criticize our government, our military. Would you want to lose the right to criticize American government? Would you want a law being passed that said that you can't criticize America's military more than other countries? There's literally more laws in America to protect a foreign country than there is America. And now there's lopsided. And the funniest thing too, is this is how controlled opposition Republicans are. If you're like a normie and you listen to all these dumb pages that literally like the left, uh, they're all talking about DEI this week, right? DEI, which means uh, didn't earn it. No, I'm just kidding. That's the joke. But it's like diversity, equity, and inclusion. But these laws are basically DEI laws for one race, one religion, and one country. This is like curving the Constitution, curbing free speech, forcing schools to lopsidedly enforce certain policies for only certain groups. They're doing e like literally everything that they pretend to, to fight, they're literally doing. Like people think I'm just being ha a hater or something. It's like Governor Abbott doesn't believe in free speech. Donald Trump doesn't believe in free speech. D Governor DeSantis doesn't believe in free speech. They don't believe in equal rules. And the second you ask for equality uh, under the United States Constitution, they're going to call you racist, sexist, or anti-Semitic. It depends who's calling you it at the given day. It's, it's all a joke. So, you know, that's what Rogan said. Pretty bold, pretty ballsy. Um, interesting that it's the same exact day that the governor passes more hate speech laws because that's what america is about speaking of phony republicans that need to be called out for being disgraceful and pathetic uh sellouts here's marcia phony blackburn who's trying to pretend like banning tiktok is going to stop the cartels meanwhile uh justin amash we're going to talk about him later he says that it's actually uh a door for the government to go after X and Elon Musk, which I completely believe. If you know anything about what's going on, after they go after TikTok, they're going to go after X. Of course, if you understand anything about how things are working and why it's happening and who's trying to buy TikTok, of course, they're going to go after X and X. And of course, they're going to use that law. It's like passing a speech law and being like, we like free speech. No, you don't. We funded Big Pharma $18 billion, but we hate them. No, you don't. We're going to stop them by giving them money. No, you're not. Republicans, shut up. You're all phonies. Ted Cruz, you suck. Marsha Blackburn, you suck. Okay? I used to respect politicians when they respected me. Now, these people are scum. All right, let's read her fake tweet and then remind ourselves how she was trying to give vaccinated people special privileges, okay? Here's Marsha Blackburn. She tweeted, at the border, I heard how cartels and smugglers are utilizing TikTok to recruit children. We must deal with TikTok. It's a threat to our national security. Uh, that's what she said. I just want to show you a reminder real quick. In 2021, a year and a half after lockdowns, Ted Cruz and Marsha Blackburn were trying to discriminate against the unvaccinated. Ted the Cut Cruz tweeted out, it's time to end mask mandates for the fully vaccinated Americans on airplanes. So if you got a vaccine on an airplane, Ted the Cut Cruz wants you to take your mask off. But if you didn't get your vaccine, put it back on because Ted's a cuck. Senator Marsha Blackburn and Cruz introduced a resolution to call on Biden CDC to end mass mandates. You could see I underlined it real there for vaccinated vaccinated Americans only. OK, so Ted Cruz and Marsha Blackburn together pushed a resolution to say, if you got the vaccine, this was not not a week or two weeks or three. This was a year and a half after 15 days to slow the spread. Like it was wildly obvious what's going on. And this is the controlled opposition in my opinion, opinion, borderline traitorous Republicans. Hold on one second. Sorry, I was almost getting exited out of this screen. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, um, they're literally in the height of all the tyranny. They're like, let's pass a resolution that says that if you got vaccinated, you get special freedoms and liberties. And if you're unvaccinated, we'll just leave you hanging. It's OK. You can put your mask on. Do you trust her to fight TikTok and the cartels at the border? Like, how is fighting TikTok going to stop the cartels? It's ridiculous. Um, hold on one second, because my my screen almost like exited itself out. I just want to check the.
Did I, is, is this even here anymore? I got kicked out of my own live stream. Unbelievable. Am I, can you guys, can you guys even hear me anymore? Give me a thumbs up if you could hear me. Yeah, am I here? I got kicked, that was the craziest thing. I, I, they kicked me out of my own stream and logged me out. Um, Okay, we're good. I'm just gonna check on YouTube. When did it cut me off? Cause this is what, I mean, usually I don't complain. It's just an internet connection. This time, literally my entire thing just logged me out. It, it's like someone was like clicking my screen and it was like, do you want to leave this page? Do you want to leave this page? I was like, no, I'm streaming. And then it literally just logged me out of my own streaming software and I had to log back in. It's brief. All right. I'm just going to go out over what I was doing the last time. I'm, I'm sorry about that. That was, that was, that creeped me out, but um, whatever. 10 seconds. All right. I'm just going to go over this real quick again and then, then we'll keep it moving. Sorry about that. I'm glad we're back at least. I mean, that I, I have a nice live stream. I was kind of bummed about that. So Senator Marsha Blackburn, she's saying that shutting down TikTok is going to stop, uh, you know, cartels from recruiting children. But I have proof because it's public and it's obvious. And it was a, a thing that her and Ted Cruz tried to pass that they wanted to give special freedoms and privileges to only vaccinated Americans on airplanes. That's how weak they are when we're being persecuted by Democrats. Sorry, if, sorry if you heard this twice. I don't know when I got cut off. I'll, I'll be brief. I promise. When we're being persecuted by Democrats, Republicans are trying to persecute us also, including Marsha Blackburn, and give special privileges to only vaccinated Americans. I'm disgusted by both of them for that. I wish I could interview them. Here's, here's the point I want to make. Ted Cruz has been on a lot of shows. I believe he's been on Louder with Crowder a few times. He's been he's spoken at Turning Point USA. He's probably been on conservative news like 30 times in the past year or two. Has a single journalist in the Republican Party asked him why he tried to sell out the unvaccinated? Has anyone asked him that? Does anyone even know that that happened? No one even knows that it happened because nobody even asked him the question. And, and this is why I say that media is controlled opposition. It's not because they don't work with me or whatever. It's because they just softball all these people. It's like these people are selling out our constitution, selling out our first amendment, selling out our country, trying to discriminate on the unvaccinated, trying to ban social media apps, say that free speech needs to be monitored and we need a new safe space. And then what they do behind the scenes is box everybody out like they're doing to Candace Owens now to be like, you know, no, like don't, you don't want to hear them. You want to hear us. It's like, sure, listen to them, but are you going to say this stuff? No, you're going to be like, Ted Cruz, I'm smoking a cigar with a legend. It's like, that's cool, dude. Get along with them, but ask them the question of why he tried to discriminate on tens of millions of Americans who didn't get the vaccine. That's what Senator Marsha Blackburn says about TikTok. Let's see what Justin Amosh says about TikTok. And allegedly, Justin Amosh's family that's Christian was killed in Gaza. So, you know, Christians are also killed in Gaza. Not that it should matter. Anybody of any race and religion dying is horrific, no matter what country it's in. Um, but Justin Amosh's Christian family was killed in, uh, in Gaza. He said this, he said, the TikTok bill isn't just about TikTok. It's a weapon against people like Elon Musk who don't play ball with the US government when it comes to limiting lawful content. The New York Times is already making the case that he's subject to the direction or control of a foreign adversary. So once again, folks, you shouldn't read every bill because it's like obnoxious. Like you don't want to spend your whole life just reading these bills, but it's not what they say. It's what's in the bill. If Marsha Blackburn says, we're going after the cartels with the TikTok recruitment, like can, t can cartels not recruit through other apps? Like are people stupid enough to think that only cartels can only recruit through TikTok, not through cell phones or any other technology. It's just TikTok. If we get rid of TikTok cartels, they have no source of information. Of course they do. Of course they have ways to communicate, but she's such a phony. What a fraud. What a scumbag. Marsha Blackburn, you think you're better than me because you got the vaccine? You think you deserve special privileges because you got the vaccine? Gross. But uh, it's like, you know, people are like, yeah, we're going to fight China in the cartels with the TikTok ban. It's like, read the, you know, read the fine print where it says if they can say that you're working with a foreign adversary in any sort like and that's broad where it's like they could do friend of a friend or this connection to that connection they're going to open up the floodgates and they could potentially take over tiktok and i, I guarantee you the same people that want to shut down tiktok are I, I meant twitter i said tiktok before but the same people that want to shut down tiktok they want to shut down twitter and they don't really want to shut down TikTok. They want to buy TikTok. Steve Mnuchin is saying he has a team of investors to buy TikTok. 
I don't think they want Elon Musk to own Twitter either. You know what I'm saying? The same politicians and the same ones complaining about this. So of course it's an open portal to take over social media because right now there's a lot of conversations going on in social media that aren't what they want people to say. So now you see more executive orders by Republicans. You have more cries from Democrats, more control of the apps. And, and everyone's, I think a lot of people here get it. And I think a lot of people in general are starting to get it. But as soon as the truth starts coming out on social media and people start questioning the narrative, all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll beat the cartels by get, shutting down this app. No, you won't. And, and you, and somebody out there, please, like I, I've been saying this for five years. Like, I don't, I don't need an interview with Ted Cruz. Like, I don't care if I get the credit for it. I don't care if I don't get any credit. Someone, please, like Charlie Kirk, Louder with Crowder, anybody that, uh, TPUSA, please ask Ted Cruz why he wanted to only give vaccinated people the mask mandate uh, exemption. It's disgraceful. Please, somebody ask it. Anyway. Got a, a bunch more stories to get through. This one I want to talk about before the RFK vice president, which is interesting. But uh, this one is Matt Walsh. You know, actually, on that note, since we were talking about that, I want to before the Matt Walsh thing, I do want to look at these two news stories. One is from Keith Ellison, who I believe is an attorney general in like Minnesota or somewhere around there. Um, and then there's one from Canada. They're blaming people for or, or car manufacturers for theft. And then they're telling people just like, leave your fob out. Like, it's not the thief's fault. It's not the fact that we live in a low trust society now where people are just constantly scamming and stealing from each other. No, no, no. It's the cars and, and it's you. Make it easier for these criminals. I mean, this is crazy. This is US. And keep in mind, this is like the good country, right? We're I'm not saying we're better than Canada, but come on. I mean, Canada is like 10, 20 years behind us on a lot of things. Not everything. It's just they're too far left. Canada's way too far left. Like this is the good version. And then we're going to look at the even crazier version. So here's what America's telling people to do. We've also got to go upstream. We've got to make sure that the automobiles are not so easy to steal so that they're a tempting, attractive nuisance for young people. And, you know, right now we are investigating two major automakers because their cars are dramatically too easy to. There was a day in America. I mean, I don't remember it exactly. I was probably young if I even ever lived in it. But people used to leave their front door open. Like, you know, people, there's rich people that were leaving their fobs in their cars because they just didn't care. They were like, oh, nobody's going to steal it. Like that wasn't that long ago. Um, now it's like, oh, it's the car manufacturer's fault. They're making it too easy to steal. It would be nice if they had the technology to make it harder to steal. But it's not the car's fault or the car manufacturer's fault for the theft. If you thought that that was bad, just wait till what Canada's doing. They're saying a lot of criminals are breaking in your house and you should just make it easier for them to steal what they want to steal in your house. Like, don't make it too hard. So just leave your car fob by the door so criminals can just take it easily without hurting you. I mean, at this point, like North America is just fried. This is so embarrassing. Constable Marco Ricciardi had a new message for vehicle owners who keep their fobs in Faraday pouches. To prevent the possibility of being attacked in your home, leave your fobs at your front door. Because they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They're, they don't want anything else. A lot of them that they're... Leave your fobs at your front door? Are you serious? Someone said in the comments, because I, I just pulled them up real quick. I, I'm going to get away from them in a second to focus. But yeah, I saw the first clip, the MSNBC one, where they said crime is down, theft is down. Where is theft down? Maybe in certain areas, but... I. Like theft wasn't that common in America. Now everybody knows someone that had their car broken into. Like I've heard so many stories of it happening in LA and everywhere. Like houses being broken into all the time. I, I can't imagine that theft is down in this country. I don't believe it, but I would have to look at the statistics unless they're like covering it up. I don't know. But what can you really say about that? I could talk about this for a while. It's just like Canada is insane leave your fob by your door to make it easy to take how did they say that with a straight face like where are all the real people are we in the truman show is this like a idiocracy or some sort of movie like if, if we're in a movie someone let me know in the comment section like just you know what i'm saying someone pops out of like the set and they're like dude we're just kidding back to, back to the regular programming it's shocking to me that there could even be like 10 people let alone 100 let alone like 10 million let alone 100 million that's like yeah that's the best way to fight crime is just leave the fob by the door and let them take it, bro. 
just let them take your car? Is this real? I Is that even... I, there's nothing to even say. I could complain about it. I could rant. It like it does. It just doesn't matter as long as people think that way. Like who thinks that way? I don't even know where they are in politics. Have you met people that think this way? Like, am I? Do I live in a bubble where I just don't talk to people who think this way? I I don't get it. I've never met one person like that. Yet somehow they run government <laughs> in Canada. <laughs> like they're police officers in Canada. Like, please somebody tell me this is not real. I've never, I've never met one person who's like, yeah, yeah, that's how you, like, the theft is fine. I know they're out there. They're voting. They're electing these people. They're cool with it. They have social media accounts. I just, I just, maybe I, like, protect myself with this, like, spiritual bubble where I just block these people out without even knowing because I just can't even fathom where they're coming. So North America, for God's sake, wake up. This is just like, there's a lot of weird stories and embarrassing stories. And I get why a lot of Republicans just talk about the left all the time. It's like unlimited, insane content. Like the stuff they're doing is pathological. It just sucks because it's similar to Canada. If you don't have a real opposition to the left, then then nothing changes. And that's what's going on in the America. And I heard it's even worse in Canada where like the Republican Party is not really conservative. And the conservative party in America seems way more conservative than Canada, but they're actually not either. They just are better actors and better talkers to, to maybe convince the people. That's what politicians are. It's like, what do people in Canada think? And then they just pretend to be like you. It's like, what do people in America think? So in Canada, the conservatives act more liberal because more people are liberal. In America, the politicians act more conservative and wear cowboy hats and hug the flag and come out to the gayest song ever ymca no i just think that's hilarious that that's trump's theme song it's like trump's this americana guy and it's like ymca he comes out to like the gayest song ever and i'm not saying that in a derogatory way because the ymca is a fire song like you know what i'm saying it's a good song like if the ymca comes on at a 70s party come on who's not singing along i'm not mad at that it's just like a funny dynamic where they're like yeah patriots like who, whatever the vibe is of the country, they just come out, play some songs, wear cowboy hats, and then sell us out. It's it's just wild. So I got to move on because I, the more I think about what's going on with allowing theft and, and normalizing it, the, the more bothered I get. Um, I have a few clips that I saw on Twitter, like it came up in my feed where I don't know how long ago this was. It looks like it was in the last couple of years. I'm guessing it was in the last couple of years. Um, it's Matt Walsh, Jeremy Boring, and Ben Shapiro talking. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm like 80 to 90% sure that they're referring to critics of themselves. And I want to make this point clear before I play the clips. I try not to call everything trolls, right? Because like, what is it's It's like calling everything hate speech. Like everything's racist. Everything's anti-Semitic. Everything's sexist. Like once you start doing that, your word doesn't mean anything anymore. And nobody believes you. So, you know, I, I don't want you to just trust me and respect me because I demanded and I call you names. I want it earned. I want to earn that every time I go live by being honest. I don't like demand it and say you're you're a troll if you don't agree with me. So I try not to call people trolls that much because like what is a troll? Like sometimes a troll is someone that's really douchey or really young or drunk. You know what I'm saying? Some people are just wasted online. Other times it's critics of you that are, you know, being mean. And other times it's critics of yours that have a point, you know? So I, I, I'm i going to say that they're referring to what they consider trolls, but Matt Walsh, it seems like he's having a moment of accountability and saying the reason these quote unquote trolls are feeling this way is because you're trying to say that patriotism involves being loyal to our allies in foreign countries. And Matt Walsh tries to make the case where he's like, to be patriotic, all you have to do is like America. You don't necessarily have to like foreign countries to be patriotic, in which Jeremy Boring and Ben Shapiro, of course, disagree. But I just found this this, this conversation interesting. So I just wanted to play and I got to chop it up into short clips because uh, if I don't, they flag it. But at the same time, I think one thing the people that you're talking about, one thing that uh, annoys them is when they see, I think, I don't remember who tweeted. Someone tweeted something like, if you're an American patriot, it means you're pro-Israel or something. So they're mentioning like, hey, I don't know, people that criticize them. And, uh, you know, Matt's bringing it up. He's like, this is what people are saying. Yeah. Um, right. th this, this idea that like it is your patriotic duty to have this particular feeling about another country, no matter what the other country is, I don't care what country it is. 
Um, so that that goes too far on that side of it. And I think they're kind of reacting. It's kind of what you're saying. So Matt's completely right here. He's like, he's trying to, and, and this is so important for anybody. It's like the self-awareness and self-accountability. If you have no self-awareness and no self-accountability, you're just constantly blaming others and spiraling and then people get mad and you're just calling them hateful. And it's like this constant loop that a lot of the people at Daily Wire, not all of them do, where instead of addressing where they're wrong, they just say everything, everything's hateful. So Matt Walsh is like, you know, the reason that they feel this way is because because we're going too far on this topic. And he made total sense. Um, so of course, Jeremy Boring and Ben Shapiro completely disagree with him. They're reacting to that. I do think, um, so I, I do so think that I, there is something patriotic about supporting our allies because we form alliances because it's in our national interest to form alliances and having formed those alliances. And, and if we're all operating in a kind of good faith with those alliances, all right, I'll play another are concerned. And there is a kind of patriotic. Yeah, but you don't have a, but you, don't, you, you don't have a patriotic, agree. you don't have a patriotic <laughs> I do not agree. have a patriotic duty to, to support, support any Turkey. country Turkey that is not your own. Well, it's, I, so, I, I, so I will say that that I think that what that statement is missing is the the phrase at the end right now. Do you see what they do to you at Daily Wire? If you just make a common sense pro-America statement, you're like, you don't have a patriotic duty to support other countries. You have a patriotic duty to support America. And they're like, but, 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 but there's a certain country that you should support. I mean, it's like, it's like this is what happens when you have self-awareness at Daily Wire. It's like, could we be doing anything better in order to gain more support that we're losing and we're completely getting crushed on Twitter? It's like, no, 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 no. It's, it, it's them. Okay, so I don't think that you have a patriotic duty to eternally support any other country because circumstances change. The country, I mean, how many times have we seen alliances change and people end up on the other side of those alliances? But the, the idea that in a conflict between a democratic ally and an actual terror group, mm -hmm. that, it, that it doesn't connect to any sort of, we're not talking about nationalism now, which is just attachment to country. We're talking about patriotism, which goes to underlying principle, that you have no duty at all to... to so Ben's saying you, have a, you, ha you do have a patriotic duty to support a democratic ally over a terrorist, right? And here's what I'll say before I play the last clip of Ben. Depends who you're talking to in the sense of like, if you talk to a liberal that loves Ukraine and, and, and hates Russia, they'll say, if you don't support Ukraine, you're supporting terrorism because they got invaded and they're killing Ukrainians. So either you have, a, you know, our democratic ally Ukraine is who you have to support or else you're on the wrong side. You know, this is the, the argument that they always have when you don't agree with their foreign policy. But I'll play the last clip. Support a fellow democracy that is an ally in its own battle for survival, that seems to me to, to raise some the, patriotism principles the in the same way that would raise patriotism principles to say that if Hitler were about to overrun Britain, people who are saying, well, you know what, it, it, it doesn't implicate the United States at all or patriotism at all to watch Hitler overrun Britain. And it seems like it kind of implicates patriotism to watch Hitler. So the, the premise of the argument before... Ben Shapiro, of course, just completely derails it into a way that just is so extreme that you have to agree with him or you're horrible. It, it's this basic premise that Matt Walsh understands, but he knows if he ever took like a real firm stance on it that he couldn't work there. It's like you don't have to like worship another country and pass speech laws for another country and funnel all your money to another country and do everything another country wants in order to be patriotic. A, a patriotism to America is loyalty to America. And Ben goes off on a tangent, names Hitler, World War II, terrorism, because that's like the extreme angle is like terrorism, Hitler, World War II. And then it's like if Ben Shapiro goes, if you don't you know, support the ally I want you to support, now he's kind of equating you in those categories that nobody wants to be in. So then you like jump on his side and you're like, oh, of course I support you and the democratic nation because you, know, you definitely don't want to be called all those things. That's crazy. So this is these are the games that are being played. And I know... Like, I, I don't want to go over too much because I played it yesterday. I read Matt Walsh's article before he worked at Daily Wire, and he acknowledged that in American media and in American politics, if you don't bow down for Israel, as he wrote, I think literally almost as his head title, they call you anti-Semitic. If you say, I serve America over Israel, which is what one politician said, uh, Matt Walsh had his back and said, they're calling him anti-Semitic. They're wrong. And then Matt Walsh even said in that article that if you know, you mentioned the words Jewish lobby, they'll call you anti-Semitic. And Matt Walsh in that article made the case for there's nothing wrong with that because everybody has a lobby. And this is the point. I don't think I really made it very well yesterday. So I want to just explain myself before I move on. It's not to say that Ben doesn't know that Matt wrote that article. It's just if Matt said those same things today, he probably couldn't work there. He'd probably get a stern talking to. He'd probably get articles written about him. So he just plays stupid. But in that clip, it showed me that Matt Walsh knows the truth. 
And he tries to say it. And then Ben and Jeremy just shut him up. They're like, no, 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 no. And then Ben names like three extreme things, terrorism, this, that, you know, get back in line. And then Matt, it's like, ah, it's not worth it for him to talk about it or make a stance. If he made a 10 minute video about how he really feels, it's probably, it's probably lights off for his show, just like it was for Candace's. So it's like, you know, I think Matt's being a bit of a coward. And I think if he wrote an article before about how everybody who knows this gets called anti-Semitic and they just pretty much got rid of his co-host for being quote unquote anti-Semitic, you know, his silence is cowardice. And I, I, I think Matt Walsh knows better. I think he has good principles on this topic. And I think he just shuts his mouth to, to, to make that money over there, which is, it is what it is, but it's like now, you know, after they've made so much money, like people just don't think it's cool anymore. So I could see him shifting on that topic within the next year or two, because eventually everything he's doing is going to be unpopular and just countered, not by people who are necessarily being hateful, but by people who know that he's being, uh, you know, is, is basically putting himself on a leash in order to not get yelled at over, you know, like he did in that clip there. But um, that's my opinion. Last thing I'm going to show, and then I'm going to just read a few comments and try to end this pretty briefly. Um, RFK picked a vice president, and uh, Charlie Kirk tweeted out, RFK's VP choice, Nicole Shanahan, is a six-figure donor to George Goscone, the pro-crime Soros-backed prosecutor who helped wreak San wreck San Francisco and is currently wrecking LA. She spent big on Measure J, a Los Angeles measure to reroute spending from law enforcement and prisons to social services and mental health treatment. In other words, not putting criminals and very dangerous psychos behind bars. This is a far left pick by RFK, who is apparently looking to shore up his progressive bona fides, a major red flag for common sense independents and centrist voters who are also sick of rising crime, but intrigued by his campaign. Um, you know, I, I would say I like RFK as a person, but Picking someone who donated that much to Gascon, if that's true, to me, that's like a huge red flag. Like Gascon is probably the worst prosecutor in, in America. I don't know if that's true, but it's he's got to be top five unless there's other bad ones. But like that type of donor money as a VP is, it, 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 I don't know. It's just not cool. With that being said, I gave up on RFK's campaign four months ago when I saw his apology tour and the company he kept and the people he marched around with. I was like, oh, RFK is another clown, you know, cool guy done a lot. Appreciate him, respect him. But it's like, I, you know, it's not a real, it's not a real presidential campaign. Like if you're going to work with a big progressive donor and big Democrat money, why not just wait till, and I'm not one to say like, you have to wait to run if you want to, but he started his presidential campaign saying he was challenging Joe Biden for the democratic nominee. Although that's hard to do. I thought that that was a smarter strategy because it's like, you know, as much of an outsider as he is on certain topics, he's also a Kennedy. He's also an insider. He also has Democrat friends and Democrat donors, as you could see. So it's like, OK, running against um, Biden was a campaign I supported. If you could beat Biden and Trump versus RFK, that's awesome. Once it didn't work out, he then said he was going to go independent. And from that day on, I was suspicious not to say you can't challenge Biden or, or Trump. You know, you absolutely can, but it just like strategically, it doesn't make sense. If you could beat Biden, you have a 50% plus chance of winning. He could probably easily beat Trump. If you're running independent, you have like a less than 3% chance of winning less than that. Probably like why? So now why are you running? Then I see him on an apology tour. Then I see him working with progressive. Don't it's like what I don't, I just don't understand why he's doing it now. If he waited four years, Biden's gone. And he could be the Democratic nominee. He could actually win the presidency. I just don't understand why you'd run independent with Democrat donors and big establishment money. If you're going to take the big establishment money, just wait and run as a Democrat, which I thought he was originally doing. If you're going to run independent, do a real independent campaign where you're not beholden to anybody. If you're running independent and you're and, and you're already aligning yourself with these people, it just makes absolutely no sense. I saw jokes on Twitter, and I'm not saying this is true. It's just humor, comedy reasons. People are like uh, joking. They're like, you know, he, he's just like, you know, picking some hot like Asian vice president. And they're like, you know, the Kennedys always like to, you know, work like that. And like people were making jokes like that. They're like, this is what you think it is. Like I was just laughing at some of the comedy on Twitter, like just saying like he just picked someone hot because, you know, the Kennedys are can be players. I'm not saying he's unfaithful, but you know, they have a way with women. Like they definitely 
Kennedys do well in the women department. So I don't know that that's true. I just thought it was really funny, to be honest. Um, yeah, I, I don't understand what he's doing. I don't trust it. It doesn't make any sense. And I feel like he's doing the worst of both worlds. He's running independent with with donor money instead of just running Democrat with donor money or running independent without it. I don't I don't know. I, I don't see it. And, and a lot of people will say, you know, he's taking votes away from Biden even though he, he thinks that he's taking votes away from Trump. He was asked in an interview and he said, I think I'm taking votes away from Trump. He could have took progressive votes. A lot of people say he's trying to take progressive votes. I'll just be honest. I don't know how many people there are, but I would say most of the kids that are progressive, not the old people that watch Rachel Maddow and MSNBC, but like the tens of millions of pro progressive kids that are like really progressive, progressive, like socialists and stuff. Most of them are pro-Palestine. RFK takes an establishment pro-Israel, extremely Zionist stance that like doesn't line up to any of his other logic in any other part of the world. And he's proven that he's ju just the same as every politician in that department. All I'm saying with this is if he really was just running to take progressive votes, he would pretend to be pro-Palestine, like because that's where all the kids, they're, they're looking for someone that's more pro-Palestine than Biden. RFK is not, so he's already lost those votes. The one who's going to take the pro-Palestine votes, if they're voting specifically on that, is Cornell West. Cornell West is saying he's running. I mean, he's not going to win and he's not going to get that many votes, but Cornell West is unapologetically pro-Palestine and critical of Israel. So to me, like he'll take more of those votes. But RFK, I mean, maybe he'll take like boomer Democrat votes who know the family name. I'm not really sure. I just don't I like the campaign to me is just like it, it's a wasted opportunity at this point. But God bless him. I just I don't personally understand what he's doing by running independent with establishment Democrat donors who vote for some of the or give money to some of the worst prosecutors in America. With that being said, I'll read a few comments before I leave. But I wanted to say this, too. I was thinking about doing a, a video on Jared Monroe and his NDA with Steven Crowder. But I decided not to because now it's getting tied into his wife and his custody. And I, I would just feel gross weighing in on that. Other people will. They feel like that's their lane. To me, I like to do analysis of like public stuff when it seems like there's like an angle for me that seems like not grimy and, you know, helpful. I don't feel comfortable now that I see that the Jared NDA and like non-competition is now tied into his wife and custody and he's countersuing for, you know, extortion. Like, I think I don't want to touch it. So it's not, it's not like I'm afraid to touch it or anything. It's just like, you know, I'm not trying to, it's up to the courts. Like I didn't, when I was going to cover the story, it was not like, I, I never, if you noticed, I never covered his divorce. Like that just feels scummy to me. I'm not saying you can't cover it. it people have, I, I just don't like it. Like I'm not, I'm not like trying to like be a, I, it's gross. Like, oh, his wife did that. And it's like, that's between him and his wife, the courts, the custody. I'm not, no way will I make a video getting involved in this now. So yeah, I, that's not my, that's not my lane and I, I don't want to do it, but I was going to make a video because I thought it was about non-disclosure and non-competition stopping a coworker from working, which it still could be, but it's all getting intertwined and that's, it's not, right for me so let you know time play out and then we'll see what happens like in a year or two someone said the tulsi interview with tucker is creepy it's like hillary clinton cadence and tone it's weird here's what i'll say about tulsi i've met her it's not like we're friends or anything but i was in hawaii and she had a town hall and it was fun i, I pulled up and tried to ask a question about syria i didn't get a question but i did get to meet her and take a picture she's very nice but she was the head of the dn or i'm sorry she was the vice chair of the dnc or next in line to be the vice chair of the dnc or she was the vice chair of the dnc like she was a high level democrat not just a high level democrat a high level member of the dnc um i like tulsi i think she deserves a place in trump's government somewhere i would not trust her like why would you want a former like vice chair of the dnc to to be the vice president this is my same take with vivek ramaswamy I'm not saying Vivek should have no role in government. I think he should. But he came out of nowhere. He cried on January 6th. He was a pharmaceutical salesman. He doesn't need to be the vice president. Like people in this country are like, vice president. It's like, let's slow our role. Let's put Tulsi on a board of advisors for foreign policy with other people so she can just have a voice. Uh, let's put Vivek somewhere else. 
to ask for Tulsi or Vivek to be vice president is, is a huge mistake for me. So I don't, you know, I didn't see the Tucker interview and I don't know about the Hillary Clinton cadence because I didn't really see it. But um, to ask for those two to be vice president, in my opinion, is extremely sh short sighted because these people are one heartbeat away from the president. And I'm not I, I think Trump will live a long time. I'll pray for him. He's he looks happy and healthy. And I don't think anything's going to happen to Trump. And I wouldn't ever like you know, push that on him. Cause I think he'll be fine for a long time. He's a healthy guy, but you know, these are not spring chickens, as they say, uh, Biden and Trump are very old, the oldest presidents ever. You don't want to make a DNC vice chair, your, your VP or a pharmaceutical salesman who said he cried on January 6th. Like, but that's what the Republicans want. Like they're like, yeah, yeah Vivek. And you're like, uh, okay. Someone said you were smitten over Tulsi. I mean, the, the picture we took was cute. All respect to her and her family. I'm not saying it's like a thing, but like we took an, we took a good picture. I was talking, you know, she was looking at me. We were we were, we were having a conversation. It, it came out. It was a good picture. I'm not I'm not saying I was smitten, but I'm not saying I wasn't. You know, I, it just was what it was. It was a moment. I was it was a you know, it's 2019. I'm out here in the jungle of, uh, you know, Hawaii taking pictures. It, it is what it is. Just just leave it there. But I'm um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say I was smitten, but if you want to call it that, I won't disagree. Um, I thought Diddy told us that he won't stop making P Diddy jokes. That's another thing that I'm not really talking about. It's it's not for the same reason as the Crowder thing, but it's like um, I just don't you know. I need more info before I, I'm not going to just start blaming people be like, Oh, it was him and him. It's like, let's, let's see how it plays out. I'm not, I know about as much as everyone else knows from just reading things online, but clearly something's going on. I just sadly don't trust our government at this point. I wish I did to like solve the mystery. You know, like if I lived in a moral country where the government was just always doing awesome stuff, I'd be like, Oh yeah, they'll, they'll reveal it. But it's like, will they will they cover it up will they make him the fall guy did he do it did he, like i don't i have no idea but i have to be patient to see what more information i could get so i can make like a better call on it is did did he is fake news i'm not saying it's fake news i'm just saying i don't know what to believe and i don't trust i don't trust the process but i will be looking just like everyone else it's just i i could talk out my ass now and be like oh i know what's going on it's like i know about as much as everyone else knows and it's there's no point of me to like weigh in on it. Let me see. Out in the jungles of Hawaii, isn't that where Tarzan was filmed? I don't know where Tarzan was filmed, but Hawaii is cool. Someone said my brother was on Tucker right before he was fired. That's cool. Tulsi is the donkey hair anointed one that will ride in. They already told us for years ago. Listen. It's not up to me. I don't know who Trump's going to pick, but I just don't think Tulsi should be vice president. Like, that's not the right role. Same with Vivek. And I wouldn't want Vivek near the FDA or HHS either because Vivek made a billion dollars in the pharmaceutical industry. So, like, I don't, I don't, he can go somewhere. I think, he, I think he should run for like a congressman or something and then just, you know, work for a year or two and show that he is who he says he is and then take another position. I just think it's crazy that people just want him so elevated and they don't even know what he's about. But that's American politics. It's like uh, it's like acting, you know, it's like who's a good actor. And then you get elevated for being a good actor. It's like Obama. He's likable. Trump. He's funny. Vivek. He speaks shrewd. You know, let's give him everything. And it's like he said he cried on January 6th. Like. I, I, cry, I cried on January 6th, like. Did you cry on January 6th? You sound like a high school actor. You know what I'm saying? You're like, la, 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 la. Like, you know, those like school plays they do where they're like, do a deer, a female deer, ray a drop of pharmaceutical money. It's like, he just sounds like a, you know, like, it's like, oh, he speaks well. It's like, yeah, so does uh, Leonardo DiCaprio when he's pretending to be British, you know, but he's not like, yeah, he's a good actor. Um, so is the guy who said, you know, on January 6th, I almost cried. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah, you, the tears were just flowing down, weren't you? You saw, you saw the videos of January 6th and, and the tears. He wasn't crying on January 6th. He's acting. You know, he was acting because he thought that that 
was the moral high ground at the time. And now the moral high ground is MAGA, MAGA, MAGA. So he's Mr. MAGA now. You know, it's like I could, you know, actors are actors. It, it is what it is. But it's like, dude, Tom Hanks seemed like he was stranded on an island. It's like, yeah, that's called the uh, Castaway. It's a movie. <laughs> he's acting. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, he's very believable that's what makes him a good actor and bad actors are not believable and they don't get roles someone said damn anomaly that was gay i liked it <laughs> what the, the 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 play thing doe a deer a female deer raise some pharmaceutical money i cried on tv on january 6th then i wrote a book calling trump stacy abrams then i became ultra mega too i said it's conspiracy theory that i took money from soros because it was his brother but not george it's like we get it you know i've seen this story before it's like cool um Cito said, please stay honest and genuine. It's hard to know who to trust, but I know I trust you. Thank you, Cito. I plan on it. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. I was just talking to my buddy about this because like it's it's happened to me in the past too. Where like you you trust somebody because like of of what they say, what they do, and also like the energy. Someone can't just like tell you to trust them, right? Like that's the wrong thing. It's like you have to trust me. It's like I actually don't though. <laughs> you know, like this has happened to me before one time where like someone's like, you have to trust me. You have to trust me. You and I'm like, I don't, I definitely don't. I don't, I do not, I do not have to trust you. I don't have to trust. Like, I would never say that to someone because yeah, I, I would like my friends to trust me and, and my family, and I'd like to like reassure them, but it's not like they have to. You you can try to reassure them, but if 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 the energy of it doesn't feel authentic, then it's just like no, I don't, you know, so it's like trust is earned. It's not given and it's not demanded, like, you know, it's not like you demand it enough and someone will trust you like it, it definitely that's not at all how it works. So even with my reporting, it's like I try to let the information and, and the accuracy speak for itself. Uh, and I've noticed recently, of course, like things always fluctuate depending the time it's election season, whatever. There's a story that everybody wants to hear at one of these things. But you know, I've noticed like numbers going up recently uh, where it's like, you know, if I said something four years ago and people didn't want to hear it and now it may, it's like all happening and they'll remember that I said it. They're like, oh, yeah, I, I hated that he said that three years ago, but actually that is what's going on. So, you know, that's pretty interesting to see. Um, let me see. Believe me, don't trust me. Someone said. My spirit bars bears witness to the truth, said Ace. Someone said, Elijah wants you to come on his show. Someone super chatted him asking you to get on. I've been on before. It's a possibility. I haven't been doing very many shows recently just because, like, I don't know. I, it is what it is. Like, I'm just trying to, like, simplify my, my life and my work schedule. But I will be on with the, if you guys know Ted Nugent, obviously the rock star the conservative the patriot the american i'm gonna be on ted nugent's show on friday so i think it's on one america voice but i will be a guest on on his show so that should be fun i've never talked to ted before but he seems awesome and hilarious so every time i see like a clip of ted like at a trump rally or saying something on tv like dude he's so funny like i like that guy he's always just saying something super like raw and he's like a hunter and stuff he's cool cool people um I've been friends with his son for years, so we just set it up. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk to Ted. That should be a good time. Uncle T. Yeah, I, I saw when he was talking about like, they were like, are you talking to like the unvaccinated? And he started buying like a sheep. That was so funny. Like, dude, he's hilarious. Um, do I think the Baltimore key thing was incompetence? Personally, I don't think so. I, I'll tell you what I think. And, you know, people were smearing me. It was so not really smearing me, but they were like, oh, is everything a conspiracy theory to you? Like, it always just feels weird to me when like someone from a different country says, oh, or like, like, it's like they're trying to like sweep it under the rug before I even say anything. So I never came out and said, oh, this is what it is. I have no idea what happened there. But my before it happened, when the attack happened in Russia, this is just my instinct. I'm not saying that America did it or Ukraine did it. I have no idea. 
But my instinct was whatever happened in Russia, it's going to be blamed on America, Ukraine, and it's not out of the realm that it was them. It's like when the Nord Stream pipeline blew up. I'm not going to sit here and say who blew up the Nord Stream pipeline because I don't know. But why would they blow up their own pipeline? You know what I'm saying? Like, in my my best guess would be like someone that doesn't like them blew up the pipeline. Why would they blow, blow up their own pipeline? But I don't know. It could it could have just blown up on its own. But uh, with that, once the terror attack happened in Russia, I just assumed that something was going to happen in America. I'm just telling you how I think. I didn't know for sure. I was hoping not. But I was like, it's kind of like when something in the world happens that's like crazy. You're just like, OK, this is like it's just creepy. You know, like I'm, we're at war and it sucks. Like, I don't want to be at war, but, it, you know. I felt this way for years, even in 2020, because like, you know, things are escalating with Iran and, you know, the ship crosses this and there's always like some sort of war story in the media to scare everybody. But the thing is, like, it's pretty open now. In 2020, it wasn't. Now it's like we're funneling money to Israel, who's at war with Palestine and just killing tens of thousands of people. And we're giving money to Ukraine, who's at war with Russia. We're funding two different wars right now that are pretty, you know, emotional on all sides. So it's just like, uh, I, I wish we weren't. I feel safer and more at peace when we're not at war, but I understand it's not that simple. So I don't know what happened with the bridge, um, but I personally wouldn't rule out like cyber attack or retaliation. I also wouldn't rule out incompetence and bad crews, but... I noticed that the lights turned off. So why, like, why were the lights off and on? To me, it looked like a power malfunction or something. Like, I, you know, I'm not, I don't know how ships work, but I, I wouldn't rule all those things out personally. But apparently I'm a conspiracy theorist. Not because I say what I, it is, just because I speculate that it could be one of four things. And, and then people just start jumping in my comments and saying, oh, you're, everything's got to be conspiracy with you. I didn't sit here and say it definitely was that. I, that's just my unprofessional opinion that I'm not even pushing that hard because it's just what I think on the low. And if I felt confident enough, I'd really push it, but I don't, I'm, you know, it's just like, that's just what I think. It doesn't matter what I think on that topic, but that's what I think. Um, let me see. Someone said exactly history is littered with countless examples of litter, little things going wrong, resulting in, big disasters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's another thing with false flags. Everything's not a false flag, but false flags are real. It's a real part of history and, and nobody denies that. So these are the tricks that they play in modern times. It's like, they'll tell you there's been this many false flags in America, in this country, you know, this, this, that, this country did a false flag. Like you read history and, and nobody denies it. But then it's like, if you s suggest that something could possibly be that anything, they're like, oh, that's crazy. So, so, you're telling me that false flags have happened dozens of times throughout the last hundred years and then they just stopped as soon as the internet happened and now every thought of it is a conspiracy. I'm not saying they're all true or whatever. Everybody's right. Not everyone is, but it's like, it's so dumb. Like you want to talk about science and history and basic common sense and the truth. And, you know, like it, it's dumber to think that they just all stopped. Like, oh yeah, it all you know, everything bad just stopped at World War II and now there's no false flags. Now we're right and moral about everything and everyone else is wrong. Like, it's just, it's so much dumber than my uh, opinion. You know, it's like, yeah, they've happened probably a hundred times in the last 200 years and, and it's well, well documented, but it just ended one day and now it just never happens again. Vigilance with the super chat said Trump's connection to the God red of black king of, I don't know what you meant by that because you put dot, dot, dot. God read the black king of, I don't, I don't know. I'm not following, but thank you for the super chat. Thank you. Basic bro for becoming a member. That bridge was strategic. My gut tells me that it wasn't random. That's what my gut tells me, but my gut is not the five o'clock news. My gut is not an expert. My gut hasn't dri driven boats for 20 years, but I, you know, that's just what I think. Someone said, does Roseanne still like you now? I hope so. I still like her. I don't, I, I, I haven't, I don't know. I haven't heard otherwise. Someone said, look into his connection to God read the black King of man and the Isles." Sounds like a movie. He has royalty on both sides of his family. Wouldn't doubt it. 
I'd like to see Roseanne on your show. Yeah, I talked about it because if I interviewed Roseanne, I know some people would be disappointed because they'd want certain narratives to be talked about. But I uh, I would like to just talk about her like career. I don't know. I've never seen, like she always does an interview and people ask her about current stuff. Nothing wrong with that. But like I've never I would like to just ask her about her like history of like getting shows and everything because I just it's just interesting to me like I I know her opinions and stuff and I like I've talked to her a bunch but I've never seen someone do like a deep in-depth interview of like how she made it how she got to where she got you know what I'm saying like what it was like doing comedy as a woman and, and it, at the time and getting shows and whatever and then like t t to where she's at now and all that stuff just like a whole timeline of like the beginning to like where you're at now that's that's the interview I would like to give, but I know some people would be disappointed to be like, oh, ask her this and that, and it's like, I don't, I, I don't want to, like, I, that's the interview I want to give her personally because I've never seen it. So, ask her about her ideas on art and culture. I could. I just want to do like a whole from from beginning to career to now. That's just what I find interesting. But thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate it. There were electrical transmissions running through the bridge. There was some explosion, David said. I'm kind of taking a backseat on all that stuff until like I, I want like a week to go by and see all the info come out, but I, I'll look into it. Does anyone know anything about Trump and the sun god Apollo? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I'm not saying like, I'm not telling people to not look into that, but like, I see that stuff and I'm like, I don't feel like looking into it. Like what, like what, whoever Trump is or wherever he came from, it's not to say that it's not important, but it's like, I'm just concerned with what he's doing now. Like whether Trump came from Fred Trump, the minor or, you know, or like, didn't did he come from gold, a gold rush family or something? Maybe I'm wrong about that, but whatever. It's like, he came from the Trump's whether they're from the Isles of the Sun and, you know, the, the the God King of wherever, and I'm not Sun God of Apollo, like, I'm like, whether he came from that or a normal family, it's like, who who's he going to pick in his cabinet? Because even if he came from the Sun God of Apollo, it's like, you know, is he going to do a good job or not? Because even if he, if he came from the Sun God of Apollo and he crushes the next four years, I don't really care. Like, I'm not going to hold him accountable for from his bloodline. Like, I don't do that to anybody, so... It's just more like, who are you going to hire for Secretary of State? Who are you going to hire for HHS and FDA? I'm not saying you can't be interested in that. I'm just like, it does like it doesn't matter to me. It's like with the Kennedys. Like he comes from a family of politicians that are well connected. Whether he came from nothing or everything, like who are you now? You know what have you become? Because you're not limited to who your family was. There's a lot of people who come from families of nothing that do something, and then there's people that come from families who are like good and do bad and bad and do good. So. I, I it's there's something to be said there um it's just i that per personally i don't really talk about stuff that much because i don't i don't know like even if i found out he was from some apollo family it's like what is that i don't what does that mean what, like what do i do with that does that mean he's gonna suck you know or like does it, it, it i don't know Someone said Trump is orange. Maybe he's from the son of the sun god. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's orange because he tans or puts like stuff on, you know? Because he is like, you know, he's been rich for a long time. You figure out how to look good in certain lighting and stuff. And you're just like, let me put this on my face. Let me slick back my hair. You know, he's got the whole, he's got the whole thing down. Like how to, how to look like Trump. He's got the Trump look down for sure. Did I see Ben Shapiro on Piers Morgan? No, I just saw I saw a clip of it of like, you know, Piers was like, so Ben, can you tell me about Candace Owens? And, and then Ben's like, listen, Piers, listen. I, I, you can ask about it, but I'm not going to talk about it. Okay, Ben. So I'm going to ask again. Can you tell me about the firing of Candace Owens? Is that hypocritical because you're a free speech activist? Pierce, once again, you can ask about it, but I'm not going to say anything. Like, I, I was like, Ugh. you know, I woke up, I was like, so I was like, yeah, I saw that clip. It was like two minutes of him being like, are you a hypocrite? And then Ben's like, Pierce, let me level with you right now. And I was like, all right, well, that went nowhere. So, yeah, 
needless to say it didn't make me want to like watch the interview i just was kind of like over it before it even started total softball interview i'm sure i saw one time they asked ben a good question and he like stormed off like they actually asked a good question i think it was like bbc or something and ben just like he like stormed off the show it's so i don't i don't know what i really want to say now no, i'm just kidding but uh it's like not everybody but people like ben they're really good in, in 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 situations where they're like you know it's a contained like okay i'm in i'm in a liberal school but when there's like real debate i feel like ben just gets like disgusted that someone would dare even challenge him and he just has to like leave where it's like how dare you ask me a real question you know and i saw that same energy where when candace debated you know that one person where she was disagreeing with the things that he said and it felt it felt like no one's ever done that before. He was so just like disgusted with the thought that someone would even think anything other than him. Like, how dare you disagree with my definition? Who do you think you are to disagree with my definition? <laughs> like, you know, that's like the Ben vibe. When I saw him get questioned on the news show and he stormed out, they were asking questions about his hypocrisy and things that he had said. It Like, it wasn't that crazy of a question. You know, I'm, I'm not saying he had to be thrilled about it, but there's an easy answer there, but he just didn't like it. It was like, how dare you? Um, the Ben Shapiro impersonation gets me every time. Listen, Vero, I'm not saying I'm going to just do this for money, okay? I'm not a sellout, okay? Although here is another ad and another ad and another ad, but I'm not a sellout. Ad, 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 another ad. Um, I'm not going to just do things if you pay me a $5 super chat, but I'm just saying if you give me another $5 super chat, I'll do it again. I'm not saying I'll do it for money, but I'll do it for money because I do appreciate $5. Thank you so much. That was actually me and I'm really thanking you. Thank you for the $5 super chat, not Ben by the way, because if I did that with Ben, it would be hate speech technically. So that was me at me thanking you for the $5 because I like money. It's not the center of my universe, but it does pay the bills and health insurance and stuff. So I do, I do also like money, you know, money does make the world go around the petrodollar, not Bitcoin, but Bitcoin is doing well. Congratulations. If you sold at the high or whatever, did, did he miss the flight? This is why I'm like, I try to stay patient with this stuff because it's like, he missed the flight. He's there. He got arrested. He's hanging out with Jay-Z. Like, I've heard seven different things. So it's like, why don't I just sit back, relax, and then in a week or two, it'll be clear what's going on where it's like, I've I've heard every story about Diddy. They're like, he flew to an island. Wait, no, he's in Miami. He's this, he's that. It's like, I did see a video of like him and Justin Bieber, which like in hindsight is a little interesting you know i'm not saying anything happened but it was like hey i'm with justin bieber and justin bieber's like hey i'm justin and i was like what dude social media is a trip man i'm trying to like get politics off my feed not completely but like i get a lot of soccer clips or football if you live not in america uh mma like jokes and stuff people doing weird stuff I, like and then twitter i just get like those type of clips but on uh, on like instagram i feel like i get all sports content mostly which which i like personally someone said that impression is now legally a hate crime yeah it sucks because i'm getting really good at it too but oh well oh well maybe we'll turn out like canada Canadians, like I have a buddy that's concerned. I do the show with him, Andrew. Uh, I, Andrew's a great guy. I love Andrew. Like I always complain about Republicans in America and I could tell by the way he's looking at me that he's just like, you don't even know how bad it is because I'm complaining about Republicans and he's like, bro, like you could tell that like Republicans in Canada or whatever they call themselves, uh, maple leaves or whatever. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, you could tell that they wish they had someone like Trump because like Trump is like a thousand times more base than anybody they have. Like they're, they're Republicans like, why don't we talk about climate change and you know it's, it's like climate change and diversity equity and inclusion you're like that's your conservatives so hannah banana said okay since you're doing impersonations for super chat tell us some tim pool beanie bunker jokes <laughs> i mean for 10 bucks i'll do it but i don't i don't want to okay um i you know i i can't for I, it's got to just come up i do want to actually I do want to have a conversation with Tim Pool eventually, a discussion, if you will. I just don't want it to be at the smelly beanie bunker because the beanie bunker is not a neutral place and I don't trust it. He might lock me out of the stinky beanie bunker, 
with his beanie bros. Um, and then if I get there, he might dig under the ground like a diglet and come back up with Luke and that other guy that hates himself or whatever, um, and become a Doug trio. And then I'm, then it's a three on one. It's just an unfair fight. Cause I'm, I'm not evolved yet. So, you know, I'd rather him just go back in his pokeball, think about what he's done and, and then we could have a conversation, but yeah, I'd love to talk to Tim. I'm just not going to the beanie bunker. Cause they were like, sorry, we locked up for security reasons. It's like, why don't you tell me that before I come here? Like, I'm not flying out here to like, you know, if you know, I'm coming. It's like, oh, we have to lock up an hour for security reasons beforehand. Then fly me in two hours early. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, to, don't cut it so damn close then. I didn't know that was the rule. this year. And then people are like, you know that. How do I know that? Like, what are you talking about? Whatever. Um, anyway, he does, someone said, ha, ha, ha. He does look like a diglet. I know I'm I'm oddly good at like dissing people like I don't know what it is like co comedically I like like a roast battle so I'm not trying to be mean but I am trying to be funny like he I, I I've got a lot of good nicknames you know Diglet with a beanie he does look like a Diglet which is important because you can't disrespect a Diglet because they they can evolve level up and then you know it's a three on one and they got some tunnel type attacks which you got to be careful of ground type. You got to know what type you are. You got to be honest with yourself. Are you a water type? Are you an air type? Cause they're super effective, not very effective to those who play Pokemon. You know what I'm talking about? You know, everything kind of balances itself out. So I'm still trying to figure out who I am with my blue beanie on. I'll figure it out. Never even knew about Diglets until anomaly. Yeah. I know all the Pokemon. I mean, I was like a Pokemon fanatic, you know, I had to catch them all. That's like, you know, they say that in the title, gotta catch them all. And some kids are like, yeah, whatever. I'll just play the game. And I'm like, I took that as like a demand. They're like, I was like, yeah, I, ha I have to catch them all. It's like, go to bed, stop playing Game Boy. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. I have like, I caught them all, all 150. I think I did some cheat to catch 151, get a, get a Mew. You know what I'm saying? I, ha I, I caught all of them for sure. Absolutely. I have both versions, red and blue, like. There's a lot of games going on in my in my childhood. Um, someone said Diglett is a dork and singing's gay. Don't disrespect Diglett. Diglett is. Are, are you talking about Tim? Honestly, Tim Tim's song is better than I thought it would be. I'm not even gonna just like shit on his whole life or anything. It's just like funny. But um, I thought I thought his song was like I thought his song was good, better than I thought it would be. I, I'm not hating on his music. I think it's one day in an alternate universe maybe we could do like a Pokemon song. You know. He could bring that Diglett energy. We could collab and make make a smash, you know, maybe even get it in a new Pokemon movie or something. So you never, never rule it out. I'm all about peace. I'm all about, you know, forging bonds and stuff. Um, Pokemon yellow. Yeah, I had yellow too, but, you know, I'm, I'm so old. It was just red and blue. Then it's yellow. And you know how it is. They got to make a Pokemon for everything now. 15,000 movies, five copies. You got Nintendo DS. It's like, it's too much. You know, I, I caught them all and then they invented new Pokemon. There were only 150 and then there was 151. And now there's like War Borble. And you're like, who the, who the hell is that one? You know, they like, they just got bored and, and just started doing too much. Like, I remember it was Jigglypuff and then like Wigglytuff and then, you know, another one pops out. I, it's it's exhausting. But also, I'm too old for like Pokemon. Apparently not though. I mean, there's like 50 year olds that play Pokemon still. So I'm just over it. Although I did have a friend that did play Pokemon, and it was actually fun to play. Like during the pandemic, I was locked in a inside for three months. I, I started playing a little Pokemon, the newer version. Not gonna lie, it was fun. Um, If you ask Chris from Trapped, he's going to say he's disrespectful. He's going to say who's disrespectful, Tim. I, we've never, I've never talked about Tim Pool to him. Is that what you're <laughs> talking about? We don't talk about Tim. We do music and shows together, but like, why did he do something wrong to Tim or something? Or did he do something wrong to Chris? I, that, I didn't, I wasn't even aware of that. Hmm. Someone said Diglett and Magnemite started off. I don't want to just make this into a Pokemon stream because like 50% of this stream is going to be like, this is awesome. And then the other 50% is going to be like, wait, what, what's a Magnemite? Magnemite is a, is a different Pokemon. It's not, it doesn't look like Tim Pool. Mm, nah, it doesn't. 
Someone said you've talked about Tim to the whole world. To be fair, someone gave me a super chat to do it. I wasn't trying to do it, but I, I'm uh, it's whatever. You know, the the whole like failed attempt to go on the podcast and being stranded there and it, like it's it's over. I don't care anymore. But someone egged me on and like gave me a ten dollar super chat. And you know, you throw coins at me, I'll dance, I'll sing, whatever I gotta do. I noticed this one guy's live stream, they'll like pay him to do impressions. It's like, do I have to do that now for my, like I'm like a street performer now? They're like, dude, ten dollars for a Ben Shapiro impression, you know, eleven dollars for a Tim Pool, and I'll be like, you know, I'll just turn into a clown for you guys for the last half hour. Listen, it's it's a rough economy out here. It's 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 that Biden Bidenomics or whatever they try to say it is. So someone said I'm gonna have to ask my young kids what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, this is you know you know this stream's gone too far when we start talking about Pokemon for five minutes. Thank you guys. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. God bless the world. I appreciate you. Thanks for tuning in. I don't know what happened with the logout. Hopefully it was just a technical glitch, but it's glitched before, but not like that. That was a little weird, but uh, who knows? But appreciate it. I'm glad I at least got to. I would have been really annoyed if if it like completely deleted and I like had to restart again. So I'm I'm at least grateful that that didn't happen. Thank you, Mail Shark, talking about Raichu, the evolved version of Pikachu. Enough Pokemon. I don't want to lose half my audience. They're like, dude, you're a political show, not a Pokemon show. It's like, listen, we all change. Like, first, I was a conspiracy theorist. Then I became a little more liberal. Then I became more conservative. And now I just I just turned into a Pokemon channel. And, you know, that's it. We, we're going to part ways, but no. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Check out my shop at dreamrare.com and check out dreamrare links for all my links. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. I'll be back tomorrow or possibly Friday. Hey, what's going on, my friends? Just a few ways to stay in touch and support if you'd like to. The first way is dreamrare.com. We have blue beanies, black beanies, pink hats, other colored hats, freedom versus tyranny shirts, stay blessed long sleeve, God is great long sleeve, and lots of more cool items coming soon. Dreamrare.com. Check out the shop to support. Everything's made in the United States. Handpicked by me. Patreon.com slash rare talk for $5 a month. You can help support me. Support the show. If you haven't noticed, unlike other channels, I don't work with very many sponsors, sometimes none at all. And part of the way I'm able to do that is with the dreamrare.com shop and patreon.com slash rare talk. So thank you guys for keeping the show free, unimpeded, uninterrupted. I'm forever grateful. My 